you've mentioned longevity diet a few times. I think people will be well aware. Um, you're, you're quite well known for the fasting mimicking diet. Just at a, a kind of high level framework for for the average person out there, how how does this look? Is this the longevity style diet you're eating um, on a daily basis? And for the for the many reasons that we've already discussed, um, along with resistance training and and um, a lifestyle that helps you reduce frailty, you're doing that daily, and then. So periodically you're doing a fasting mimicking diet depending on where your health is at? Yes. So um, so for, for 30 years now, since my days with Walford, um, I've been looking for the, the substitution for the calorie restriction, which I mentioned earlier, right? So, and then I think it took me 20 years and then about 10 years ago or maybe a little bit earlier, looking at cancer patients, but also in general, um, I, we started uh, asking the question, what if you just, instead of being restricted all the time and being miserable all the time, what if you just most of the times eat normally, whatever you can do, whether it's a longevity diet or whatever, you know, not, not so good diet you may do, and then you just intervene for, let's say, four or five days. Um, you know, it could be once uh, every six months or so all the way to once a month, right, for five days. And uh, so now, you know, going forward 10, 15 years, uh, um, it seems to be working very well. So that, uh, um, that, you know, for example, if you think about, I'll just give an example in mice. We took mice and we did a, a, a sort of a little bit of a crazy experiment. So what if you just give them high calorie, high fat, and, you know, just the worst diet that you can think of. And then uh, once a month, you give them five days of the FMD. And then you give them, put them back in this terrible diet. It's just remarkable. The, if just five days a month of the fasting mimicking diet is able to reverse all the problematic effects of, uh, of this high fat, high calorie diet. So the cardiovascular disease uh, or conditions, the, um, the, the weight, the um, uh, loss of lifespan, right? So people on a West, uh, mice on a Western diet live a lot shorter and very sick, cholesterol super high. And, you know, they, they, they look very much like the, the human, uh, reflected very much their human profile. And they just a five days a month completely reverse it. Uh, now, this is not to say, you know, keep a bad diet and then do five days a month. But um, that's how powerful that those five days could be and now it gets tricky, right? Because then some people say, well, if, if five days is so powerful, well, why don't I do 30 days, right? Why don't I keep going? Well, the body has a way to then eventually switch you to what's called a thrifty mode, right? So, it, it, so you just got to get it right. Uh, and, and in that study, we've shown that the mice, and as we've seen for the people in the clinical trial, they seem to, if anything, accelerate or continue fat catabolism. So they keep breaking fat even after you t- return them to the bad diet, right? And, um, but w- what you don't want is the opposite. Eventually, the body enters in this uh, saving mode because it detects a very t- rough environment. And so then it goes into hypometabolic mode. And this is actually an old New England Journal of Medicine paper. If you push enough, the too much calorie restriction, the body goes into a saving mode. And now you're burning less fat and less energy. So your energy expenditure is reduced. Now you got a problem because now the body, you're going to, you, you, the system is going to want to regain the weight and maybe even overshoot the regain of the weight and gain more weight than you had originally, right? So this is why we, we tell people be careful because uh, it, the, there is a lot of mechanisms and, um, and you need to understand them uh, very well, otherwise you're gonna have a problem. Mm-hmm. So, what exactly is the the fasting mimicking diet? It's five days of less calories, specific foods. What what does it look like? Well, the the fasting mimicking diet um, is actually uh, looking at um, which ingredient, as I mentioned earlier, affects IGF one. Which ingredients affects glucose level, insulin levels. And uh, which ingredient makes the, the person um, uh, happier? And, and uh, so society uh, is, uh, um, is high and, and the hormones that they control the leptin, ghrelin, et cetera, are in the right place. So, so it's a, essentially it's a high plant-based fats, 
um, low protein, very low protein, very low sugar, um, low calorie diet is, and, and we have all kinds, right? For cancer patients, it's about 600 calories a day. For, not, for normal people, it's about 1,100 calories a day, uh, day one, and then goes down to 800 calories on day two, three, four, five. And the idea is to, if you measure IGF-1, igf bp one glucose, ketone bodies, they should be very similar to those that you will obtain if you were just doing water-only fasting. Usually, from lots of work in mice and, and humans, it's about one. So four, uh, five days of the FMD are equivalent to uh, maybe four days of a water-only fast. But, you know, the water-only fast, uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's extremely difficult to do, but it's also fairly dangerous, you know, and, uh, um, you know, because of hypotension, hypoglycemia, and lots of other problems. So people could do it, but I would not do it outside of a specialized clinic. If someone's wanting to do FMD, where's the best place for them to go to to learn more about that? I cannot say it because uh, I'm the founder of, of a company that, this, that this does that, and... Um, I could donate everything to charity or to research, uh, but uh, yeah. So I think that uh, unfortunately, I cannot talk about. I cannot talk about companies. Uh, yeah. Right, um, but you can you can get a copy of your book and you can Google it and and probably find it pretty easy. Um, in terms of of like how often someone would do uh, FMD, I've heard you speak before. Is that going to depend on where someone's health is at say for example someone who has really good metabolic health is healthy body weight very active versus someone who um, has type 2 diabetes un uncontrolled blood glucose for example yes so now we're very happy that we 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 am in the sense that our collaborators let's say have done lots of studies now on diabetes pre-diabetes and um, and so uh, it works very well for prediabetes and diabetes. And now a new study came out of University of Heidelberg where they did uh, once a month, both University of Heidelberg and University of Leiden uh, in Germany and Holland did the studies on, on diabetic, uh, diabetic patients, both worked extremely well. And these were monthly cycles of the FMD, right? So um, monthly cycle of the FMD. But at the end, even in the 12-month-long study, um, not most people uh, or a lot of people uh, did not do it every month, so they skipped some cycles, but it still was very effective. Let's say they, if they did it between six and 12 times on year one. So, yeah, so if you're a diabetic, probably starting once every month to once every two months is going to be the way to go with the hope that. Um, uh, so, for example, we just at the clinic in Milan, we treated a doctor and he had diabetes. And, um, and so on year one, I mean, we did a combination of the longevity diet and the fasting making diet. He did it maybe five times in the first year and a half. And then, you know, two years later, he was diabetes free, right? So now he maybe does a couple of times a year once he's um, back in the normal state. So, yeah, so then I think that's, uh, that's how you want to think of it. You do it when you need to do it. A diabetic person, maybe once every month, every two months. Somebody who's mm -hmm. pre-diabetic, maybe every three months. Um, and, uh, and then somebody who's an athlete and extremely healthy and very insulin sensitive, et cetera, et cetera, uh, maybe you know, a couple of times a year. Now, keep in mind that um, we, um, in mice, we clearly shown this regenerative stem cell-based regenerative uh, power of the fasting making diet. What does it mean that, you know, whether it was the pancreas, the gut, the, the, the nervous system, uh, you know, lots of different systems. We the, the blood system, the hematopoietic stem cells. The fasting mimicking diet caused the turning on of, of uh, uh, stem cells, and then during the refeeding period, these stem cells went to work and contribute to, to the regeneration of various systems. Now, in people, it's harder to prove it, so we're starting to 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 have evidence for that. But uh, but it's going to take a while. So yeah. So then. I'm just trying to go away from the diabetes in, into, you know, mm -hmm. processes that everybody will want. Um, yeah, if this is also true in people now, uh, this fasting making diet refeeding cycles can gen can introduce a multi-system regenerative uh, uh, effects. 
that um, that could uh, could make a big difference in in lots of organs. How much do you uh, feel, or do you have a sense of of how much of this kind of re- regener- regeneration and improvement in certain metabolic um, or biomarkers of metabolic health when doing FMD are driven by calorie restriction and weight loss versus the kind of specific foods and nutrients that um, are within that diet? Um, I mean, obviously, you can get lots of the effects of um, of uh, the FMD with water-only fasting. Um, we do have papers where we show that, for example, the prebiotic content of the fasting-making diet uh, was very important in the in the effects in the uh, inflammatory bowel disease in the mouse model. So, so I think it's it's both, but um, the um, the weight loss uh, in our latest human uh, paper, uh, we're actually showing um, no correlation with the weight loss. Um, meaning the weight loss happens is probably beneficial, but it wasn't that people that lost most weight were benefiting the more uh, on, on lots of markers and, um, or, and risk factors. So, yeah, so the, there was no correlation with the weight loss, uh, um, suggesting that that's not, the weight loss is not key in this, but it's more the um, pushing the system um, to a state, a, a metabolic switch, right? So if you just think about diabetes, right, and, and, and the origin. So we, we look at diabetes as a, as a disease, and, and then you give people lots of drugs. And, um, but... Uh, if you think about 10,000 years ago, um, people in the summer had to become probably overweight or obese. And I always talk about the emperor penguin, right? The emperor penguin, um, they become fat um, because they're going to go about two to three months with no food at all, right? So every year they become fat and they become insulin resistant. Um, and so they can put away the fat that... Mm-hmm. allows them to survive for those two or three months where they have no food at all. And so uh, this is clearly our history too, right? So we used to have moments of lots of fruits and lots of nuts and lots of honey. Um, so yeah, you had to become fat during the, the period. And then what unlocked that state was probably fasting, the first five days of fasting. Now, probably, if, as I was saying earlier, if you continue, now you go from a fat accumulating mode to a energy expand low energy expenditure mode right so yeah so then that's why the fasting mimicking diet and not the water only fasting you want to switch person to the insulin sensitive mode but not to the low energy expenditure mode right the, the, the true starvation response and that's tricky and this is what we specialize in and uh, yeah so so i know people like to improvise and like to but uh you know, usually when you do that, you get hurt. And in the long run, you might not understand it and see it. Uh, in the long run, you're going to get hurt. And I mean, um, we, we work very hard to make sure that uh, we try to get it all in the right place. And, uh, you know, we're slowly getting there. Mm. Yeah, you see all sorts of, you know, um, very long-term, 30-day, 40-day water fast, people doing them on online. So, um something to, to kind of think about there. But th- that, that, that last point that you made, um, so a protective, so insulin resistance can be protective um, in an environment where there is a shortage of calories and you're coming into a famine and then you're going to need to draw down on some of that fat. Um, but then, as you say, if you're in a really big calorie deficit, if I'm hearing you correctly, your body then goes, well, hang on. There's low food availability where um, we're not getting a, many calories in here and storage is running out. Let's, let's reduce the amount of energy that we're, we're burning or utilizing as an organism to, to kind of help preserve some of this energy as a survival kind of tactic. Is that right? Yeah. And this is you know, shown by the New England Journal of Medicine, right? So uh, people forget these papers. I, I don't, I'm not... It's entertaining, like somebody was saying, every 30 or 40 years, people like to repeat the same science. But uh, 
yeah, these papers are out there, and um, and uh, it's very clear that um, that's a mistake, right? To 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 not do it, it's a mistake. As ninety nine percent people don't do it, so everybody in the world should do at least one or two cycles a year just to unlock that insulin resistance state of the fasting mimicking diet. And of course, you don't want to do water only fasting because you know most doctors will say. And most experts will say this is not something that people should do at home, stop eating. Uh, And also because of what I was just saying, the water-only fasting may uh, drive you into the because it's not clinically tested and uh, it may drive you into this thrifty mode uh, even, you know, in in a few days. uh, Not clear, but um, uh, some of these studies are not allowed anymore, right? So uh, Enzo Keys back in the 50s and 60s had done these semi-starvation studies in humans and that was probably the last time in hi- human history those would be allowed. Um, but this, if you read them, they're just remarkable, remarkable uh, studies of, of human volunteers that you know undergo this four weeks uh, or more of, of starvation time. But the, the, the biology and the physiology out of that is it's just incredible. Yeah, I'm not sure that'll get ethics approval. I'm not sure they would be no, paid to so. people putting their hand up to do that. You'd have to pay them a lot of money. You'd be surprised, you know, you'd be surprised. If it was like a study done by a university, there'd be some uh, some volunteers for anything. But yeah, I don't think it'll get a ethical approval. Yeah. 